Long time ago, I helped save people from danger. I went into hiding and decided to live a normal life. I told you to leave me alone and let me live my life. Why do you think you get rid of me? Look, I write this letter to warn you that your job is not fully complete. I've been searching all around just to find you, but you keep running. I finally found you after all this time and please come back to Homeland. The people are here are terrified. The days here are getting short. We need your help, Harmony. Otherwise, the people here we both know and love will be forever gone. I don't have much time before they find me and bring me back. I hope you would have a change of mind. It's weird. It's like I could feel her presence around me. I light this candle to find guidance. I don't know why she's reappearing. I thought I completed my work. Once she gave me the letter, I knew at this point, the world was in my hands. And there's nothing that can change. To be alone by yourself and then with someone else is spring bliss. But to embrace someone else, you have to love. Summer, winter, and fall.
No, you don't have to pick me up. I think I'm just gonna stay at my house. I'm sorry. It was last minute. Yeah, whatever. I'm stranded. I can't go home tonight. Yeah, I'll tell you everything when you get here. Can can you just please come? When I look up from my pillow, I dream you are there. Schools first closed in March of um, 2020. Uh, I thought it was going to be a temporary thing. The uh, original message that we got from the superintendent was that it was going to be, you know, just until things got under control, whatever that meant. And I thought that was going to be two weeks. Um, it was about how do we move everything that we do during the school year, during the school day, online. And I remember the first thing I did was make sure that all the teachers knew how to use Zoom. <laughs> so we had a, an emergency staff meeting. And I said, OK, we're going to try this thing called Zoom. Go back to your classroom and try to log in. And, and we all successfully logged into Zoom. And we thought, oh, great, we're good. No, <laughs> it turned out being a little bit more complicated than that. He does not ask for your company, not at the center, the center of the world. When it first happened, I'm not gonna lie, like, I didn't really take it that serious. I thought we were gonna be back within, like, the next month or two. And then, like, a whole year went past, and I'm like, wow. I really haven't been in school in a whole year. Like, this is horrible. I wasn't really expecting it to last so long that it did. Honestly, like, when it first happened, I was pretty cool with it, because I was already tired with school and I was entire I was tired with the environment. So it was really weird. It was almost as if people knew at that point, like they were afraid on Friday and then on Saturday they said, okay, this is our last chance to be around people. It was almost like they didn't know how deep it was gonna get, but they knew in a really weird way. I remember thinking like, oh man, okay, we got this. Right? We had thought that we were gonna be out for a few weeks and really secretly I was like, we're gonna be out till the end of the year. Um, 
but it didn't seem scary at the time. It was like, I don't know what to believe. I'm not afraid yet, really. Fear came later. Um, I don't know how extreme this is gonna get. I don't know how long we're gonna be, but it was so much not what I do. But I was, I left kind of feeling prepared with the caveat thinking that I'd be back in a week. Um, I was like trying to keep it cool and collective, especially like with students, but yeah, I was definitely panicking a little bit. Um, like I said, like supplies was disappearing, toilet paper, flour, right? Like all those good amenities that we need. And I was worried about my family and friends, and it was very much unknown because it was to the point where it was like, oh, this is like, oh, just normal flu, it should be fine, to like all of a sudden having this death toll that started amounting, and it was very nerve wracking. Um, and I'm at the age in my life where I have all my friends getting married and I had like five weddings to go to and I'm like my brother was getting married the next week before the schools shut down it was just like a hectic time about just like life events and not only in school but out of school and be like how are we gonna deal with this like what is going on in that that unknown um, that's always frightening we were thinking primarily about the freshmen and the seniors. Mm -hmm. Not that we didn't care about the sophomores and the juniors, but because the freshman year and the senior year are really, really important in high school. Um, the seniors, we thought, okay, well, they know us, they know the school, they know the community, but we have to really focus on their transition. The freshmen, we were really concerned about that. How do you start high school virtually. We do all sorts of work usually with freshmen, um, orientation, community building, just getting to know the norms. Um, they didn't have any of that. Freshman theater did it. We attempted, we made a group chat um, and you know there's, there, there we had our group so we had the kids that are like not there. I mean sure they'll log on to get like attendance but that's that's about it. And it's not like they didn't want to do theater, it's just like they just they couldn't vibe with it or just they just like, no. Nah. And I have to do Zooms all the time and I have to be on the computer, you know, almost every single day. And I have to like talk to people, but not in person is very frustrating. And I, I never thought I would be the person to really be upset about that. End of my sophomore year, I missed Spring Fest, which is the dance end of year performance. I missed that, which I was cast in. And it was going to be my first time in Spring Fest, so I definitely missed that. And then missing the end of year. And we are doing a symposium at the end, but it's not the same as doing Spring Fest at the BU Theater. So I've definitely missed out on that. Yeah, and that's the thing is that having five new advisees, especially to like a new school altogether, is definitely challenging. Not only, hey, this is how the school is run in general, this is now how the school is run in remotely, right, or in this kind of pandemic um, environment. So at the end of the school year, 1920, so March of, of 20 to June of 20, our mindset was just, okay, we're just gonna try to end as well as we can. Um, and some things we felt really great about, some of the things we didn't feel so good, but we felt like, all right, this is the best we could do with, with little preparation little resources. September 20 to now here we are in the spring of 21 is completely different because um, we weren't just finishing up we were starting and um, it meant everybody was trying to create school in virtual land and I felt like I was running a school I couldn't see. One of the things that was most challenging is, at that point, I had been teaching for 24 years. And I think for someone like me, as an older or veteran teacher, by that point, you've already developed who you are as a person. Um, in many ways, I'm a performer teacher. <laughs> I have to act out things, um, sing things, um, demonstrate things live. So when you realize you're now going to do that within a 10 by 12 screen, <laughs> you do have to adapt, but there's a part of almost like your teacher's soul that dies. And then you have to figure out to like come from the ashes, so to speak, out of that. It's like the phoenix has to rise. 
And so um, I actually went through a place of very bad negative, I don't want to do it. My husband said during spring break of last year, during the quarantine at its height, you need to get over it. And I mean, when your spouse tells you to get over it, you, that means you're stuck. To after spring break, something kind of clicked where, well, no, I have to do this. It was really learning how to figure out who am I as a teacher then if I can't be in front and in this performative space. Mostly I, I worried about the community. You know, this is a school that prides itself on, on our community. How do you build a community through the internet? Everybody was feeling thrown and everybody needed support. So we spent a lot of time as, as staff talking about how do we support each other as staff before we talked about um, how we support each other with students. Personally, because I spent a lot of time in the building by myself or with one or two people, it just felt um, like I was disconnected from a lot of people. And every conversation just um, was focused on work in the sense that, you know, you, time was precious. So you had to like get to all these people and there wasn't time just to hang out and chat with people. And so I, I really missed missed that. I wasn't, you know, doing enough with schoolwork and, you know, it made me very upset because I know my brain thinks differently than most people. I mean, I know everybody has mental illness and whatnot, but at the same time, it was very difficult for me to understand what was going on in my brain because I was getting help, but I wasn't getting the right amount of help to understand what was really going on. Um, I kind of lost my passion for it, like a little bit. Like, I don't feel like as eager to do it as I used to. So I was just like, okay, you got this sad situation, or sure you're not learning this, or sure it's what it is. Like, oh my God, doing those monologues over the screen and her trying to do this, like, okay, miss. I'm trying to get in good with you, so I, like, I'll do it. Well, I definitely think I've missed out on a lot of just like connecting because I feel I felt like rather disconnected from the community, especially like the freshmen. It's like I feel like last year when I was a sophomore and the freshmen came in, I met a lot of them and I felt really connected. But like this year, I feel really disconnected from the freshman class and even just any other class that isn't the junior class because we don't have that or at least before we went hybrid, we didn't have that in the hallway reaction and interaction time. Like I, you know, work with like Miss Facey or Mr. Kelly because I teach the same classes with them, so I'm collaborating with them, but uh, Miss Niebuhr, she is my lady, right? And like she was always next door to me, so I would pop in and be like, hey, what are we doing today? Hey, what's going on? And now like I didn't have that, right? And she's terrible at texting and I'm terrible at texting. And it's just like, we'd like just, like miscommunicators, so it's like not be able to check in with each other like we usually do. So that distance is is challenging. Uh, a lot of those, you know, relationships, I don't think were really strained necessarily, um, but obviously some distance uh, just because you know we're in a pandemic and we have to be socially distanced. So it was interesting to see um, people's lives through the Zoom, um, and that was you know novel for a couple months but it got it got old <laughs> you know um, and you really missed interacting with people in person or at least that was my my experience mm -hmm. um, and and I think once we realized that this wasn't going to be a temporary thing that this was going to be something that we were in for the long haul I think um, uh, the, the anxiety and, the, and, and then the fatigue kind of kicked in. Really thinking about, not that I didn't do this before, but really thinking about students um, and where they are, right, is always part of my work because I work with students that are challenged in many ways in a lot of my classes. And so really thinking about access is really important to me in terms of equity. So 
there are lots of things we all as a district could have done differently. Um, how do I say this? Um, I think that this pandemic just crashed open a whole bunch of issues that we're already dealing with, right? The fact that we don't have internet for kids at homes before a pandemic happens is amazing to me. The fact that we don't have, didn't have one-on-one -on -one technology before this pandemic is amazing to me. Um, I think that BPS did a really good job of getting those things to people, but it took way too long. Are you struggling with something? Okay. What is it? Do you want to talk about it? Okay, well, what do you need from me? Um, so I think that's just like, it's just like this whole sense of seeing that like we had to do all of this in school and then the pandemic hit and then all of a sudden they're like, all right, we're not going to do that anymore. And you're like, that's always been an option. You could always have done that, right? Like, oh, we can just do remote like learning if we wanted to. Oh, every school, in, every student in BPS can have a, a Chromebook magically now. Oh, I don't know that was possible, right? Like there's certain things that happened in the pandemic where you're just like, oh, this is possible. Why weren't we doing this beforehand? I, I, don't, I don't understand that. Even more so is like now having students that are in need and they need something from me and they're not only dealing with everything that's going on in the world, but they're also dealing with school, right? And like trying to learn remotely and trying to use technology that they may never have used before. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I think if, <laughs> if, the world were a more equitable place, um, Zoom school would have been so much easier. Um, you know, it starts with small things like, oh, my internet access is kind of shaky, so I didn't catch that last thing you said, right? That, can you repeat it? That's like an easy equity issue to fix. Um, but then I think as a teacher, it starts, to, it starts to get harder when you get into things like, I can no longer hear what you guys are saying, right? Like your internet is so down that I don't hear your thoughts, so I don't know where you're at. I can't see your face, right? Because you can't turn the video on, and I totally get that. You, you know, people have four siblings, and we're all Zooming, and I'm getting no input. Um, a couple of them were also needing to work for their families, so they needed like money for like you know rent, or they need money for groceries, and then groceries were, you know, hard to come by. So everyone needs help, and especially right now in a pandemic, it's just like I need help, and that's like okay to like say and okay to ask for. First two weeks of school, I didn't really do schoolwork. I kind of just was like, I'll do it next week. Like I'll do it after these two weeks are over, and I didn't realize. High school is not like middle school where within two weeks you only get like five assignments and it's not that much because after the end of the two weeks I had 22 assignments that I was not able to finish and the first term I failed. I, I came here to do high risk because I just wasn't really doing good at school and then my guardian at home was just getting very worried and like was like, oh my God, they're not doing good at school. I gotta put them in high risk. And that kind of made me feel like, you know, they were saying I'm dumb, which I didn't necessarily like. But at the same time, there weren't really anything that I felt was bad about coming here early. Actually, you know, the end of term two, mm. I had like barely any work done and I had to like do like, like 20 assignments in one day because your productivity has yeah. decreased a lot. A lot. And why do you think that is? Because I got so used to just being at home doing nothing all day. Yeah, I think it was hard because BA was taking direction from the city, right? And when we think about what that is, is like we had to make it a, a lot of it up and we were figuring it out as we went along. And so um, I think we did the best we could, but um, without a lot of direction. It, it, it is interesting to think about that form of teaching and what that looked like. And, and it, was, it was just, it was, it was really challenging, to, to be honest. If I had to be honest about 
what last year looked like versus what the beginning of this year looked like and what teaching looked like. It was very challenging on all parts because so many of the things that we were used to had been taken away from us. And that same thing is, you know, outside of school, all the other music teachers, you know, we were all playing and doing stuff outside of school as well and performing. All that was just going just like this. Mm -hmm. And you kind of, um, I don't want to say you take all those things for granted, but you, you, you're certainly aware of how much you appreciate when it's all going, like just being in the room with a student and working on music and having something to look forward to yeah. makes a big difference. Like I sometimes can just like be like deflated, right? But in school, it's different. Like I feed off student energy, you know what I mean? Like I just, I don't know, like I, I love the interaction with students and just feeding off energy. And that's how like I get energy is I feed off other people and like how they're doing or, you know, um, you know, what kind of energy they're getting back to me. It's definitely hard in the beginning where I'm, I'm on Zoom, I'm like, let's do this, let's get to math, right? And there's just black boxes on the screen. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. And then no one's replying in the chat or no one's, you know, unmuting themselves. I'm like, okay, all right, okay, um, we're going to try this. And it was just mainly just trying new things and not really feeling bad. No one was used to navigating and Zoom wasn't ready for that. Therefore, we, we struggled with that as well. I don't know if I could describe really one day. I think the hardest days are the days being online for long, long hours. And some of that is about the school day, but some of it's also about other meetings after school. Um, I definitely have a new respect for sensory overload in terms of audio, visual, um, and just being like mentally on. I think just the pure exhaustion um, on certain days has been probably the hardest. You know, I'm the one that'll go out there and answer stuff and like if I see like the atmosphere is a little awkward, I'd be like, okay, well I might as well be the person to keep this moving on. So it's been, it was pretty, yeah, it's just weird. Like some of us knew each other from other schools or just outside and some of us didn't. It was, uh. I, I, I think that um, the whole year just got better when people could be more in person mm -hmm. and that um, there's something about Zoom that no matter how hard you try is just not a personal real connection. Mm -hmm. Like whenever like you have a show and like like you're with the cast it's like you guys like just all like just come as one like mm -hmm. it's like you guys like are all like just trying to make each other do better. I like that, so now that I, I'm not doing it anymore, it kind of sucks. It helped me realize more, like, for real, I mean, if you want to stop because the world supposedly stopped, I mean, go ahead, do you do you, boo, but at the same time, that's not going to get you anywhere. I'm very big, I mean, I'm a competitive person. I compete with myself, and it's, it's ridiculous. Like, if I don't got nobody, it'd be like, okay, me and Casper, me, let's get into it. Um, and the goal is always to be the top, the top, you know, successful, money, money, Ooh, we love money. And <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, there's just all these different things. So I try to keep moving forward because I just like, I can't stop now. Cause then either I'm behind or I'm at the same level as a group of people and I can't meet, can't be me. I can't stick out. I do think though, that from my own experience with young people, if you don't have the personal interactions, it's a very different thing. Um, it's a different kind of learning, at least. Um, and if I were to go to a hierarchy, I think the in-person, the direct engagement of dialogue and discourse. Um, we have a uniquely diverse student body at our school. I think that even through dialogue and discussion in class, if we don't see the diverse, you know, I mean, we're, we're in a BLM protest generation now, a Me Too generation, and there are people that I think are less able to talk to each other in this class, in a senior class, because they couldn't do that face to face with each other. So it will be work next year when they have to go to their jobs, to their trade schools, to say, oh, I have to confront um, people of color. I have to confront people who are of a wealthier 
class bracket than me, uh, persons who are white and I didn't go to school with them. Like you couldn't do the work that we would have done when you're face to face and engage discourse and ideas and histories. You can't, in my opinion, you can't do that same work. I, you know, we, I'm sure we've all had a lot of tough mornings um, this past year. But I remember one morning, I like do my, my breakfast routine, which I like get up, make coffee, make oatmeal, and I sit and I read the news. Um, and I was reading the news and I just, I, could, I just couldn't. I, it was the day that the, um, the grand jury verdict on the Breonna, Tal the Breonna Taylor um, case came out and I remember just thinking like I can't I can't I can't do this I'm I'm supposed to get on zoom in 15 minutes and like be there for students and and tell young people that we need to we need to inform ourselves about this and we need to take you know we need to the whole mission of our school is artist activists right and we're like we we can do something about stuff like this guys like we need to get together and we need to we need to figure out what to do and i think there had just been so many things in the past year that didn't seem like they were going in the right direction and like how can i how can i sit and talk to you guys through a computer screen and tell you that it's going to be okay and that we can get through this and when all signs point to like things are not okay <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how we're going to get through this. Um, and the fact that we couldn't do that in person. The fact that like, we had to have those really tough conversations over a computer screen. All I, all I wanted was like be together in this community. You can say things on a mic and behind a screen, but when you look at a human being in the eye, that is a whole level of work because words and histories impact us very differently the most that we could do um, happened, the most that we could do happened, um, and that's okay. So it's funny, because I'm not angry about it or I'm not resentful about it. I think I'm glad my husband said that to me because I had to figure out how to adapt to it. Um, and so I think some of the teachers that I talk with a lot, we have said, we, yeah, we have to kind of let this go because it was what it was and we did our best. Um, but there are lessons to learn from this. And I, and I do wonder about if education is moving further and further towards, well, it worked for those 100 kids to be online and away from human beings. And I asked the question, was it? Or were they just more comfortable? And I don't know if humanity is in a place where we need to be comfortable. Because then we miss the hard questions, you know? So I think that's hard. It's, this, is, this is going to be five minutes of music. <laughs>